All right, guys, we're making the Lee like hell. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make my Leela cowl. Now this cowl can be worn two different ways. You can either wear it long ways, and it's very wide and has really good neck coverage in the back, or you could flip it one more time and it becomes more of a neck warmer and it's bulky and it's comfortable and it's actually roomy, so it doesn't feel very claustrophobic at all. And you're gonna love the pattern. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, if at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell and then click all. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, really trying to hit on everybody's interests. And you're really gonna like some of these random projects that maybe you didn't even think about. Also, I do tips and tricks and fun giveaways. So we have a lot of fun on this channel and you are not gonna wanna miss out. Also check out my social media, my Instagram, Facebook, and even my Twitter, where I share behind the scenes, what I'm working on, what tutorial is coming up next, and even what materials you're going to need for the upcoming tutorial so you can see that before this video even goes live and be ready to go. All right, the pattern for the Leela cowl you can find in both the comment section and description section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link, purchase the pattern, and be ready to crochet with me. Now, as always, you do not have to purchase the pattern in order to create this Leela cowl. I will show you step-by-step step everything that you need to do to create this pattern in this video. The pattern is great though if you want to have reference, like physical reference on a piece of paper, or if you want to just get straight to the project and follow along with the pattern and not have to refer to this video over and over and over again as you're going step by step by step. So there are benefits to having the pattern, but it's not necessary makes sense. All right, so this pattern is an intermediate level crochet pattern. That means that you need to know how to work stitches, where to place stitches. We're working a lot of front post double crochets and back post double crochet stitches in this pattern. So if you are a beginner crocheter, you can absolutely give this pattern a try, but if you get frustrated or you're finding this pattern too difficult, it's because it's an intermediate level crochet pattern and maybe you just need a little more practice before you get here. But I wanted to create something special for my intermediate level crocheters who wanted a bit more of a challenge or a bit more of a fun project for them to work on and focus on. Makes sense? All right, so when you are ready, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials I used to make this Leela cowl. The materials that I used for the Leela cowl will include a yarn that is a size six weight, super bulky or super chunky sized yarn. I used approximately 222 yards of yarn or 204 meters. 340 grams or 12 ounces of yarn to complete this project. So depending on what yarn you are choosing to use, just make sure to look at how much yarn is in that skein or ball of yarn that you chose and make sure you're using approximately the same amount of yarn that I am using to complete this project. Now I'm using Yarn Bee's Effortless Super Bulky Yarn in the color Blue Stone and I'm using two whole skeins of yarn to complete this project. All right, so go ahead and use whatever you like, whatever color you like though, that works best for you. The crochet hook that we are using is a size N15 or 10 millimeter crochet hook. I really like to use the bigger crochet hooks with the bulkier yarns because it just makes the yarn lay more comfortably. I'm going to use a pair of scissors and a yarn needle or tapestry needle to weave in the ends at the end of the project just to clean everything up. I will have a link to everything you see here in both the description section and comment section below this video. So if you wanna get your hands on any of the supplies I'm using, you can just click on that link purchase the item and have it shipped directly to you. That way, you know, just easy and convenient that way. Some of these links, not all of them, but some of them will be affiliated links, which just means that if you purchase that item, the company will give me a very small commission as a thank you for you purchasing the item. So thank you so much in advance. If you choose to do that, all proceeds go back into my channel and it really helps me out a lot. All right. So once you've gathered up all of your materials, let's dive right into actually making our Leela cowl. The pattern that we're going to be using 
stitching for the Leela cowl is known as the stairs stitch. It is worked in a multiple of eight plus one for the foundation row chain that does not include the turning chain. So if you are one of those people that really like to work up a project without the foundation row chain, just know that the pattern is worked in a base of a multiple of eight plus one, okay? So I am going to start this pattern with a long enough tail to weave in the ends at the end of my project, create a slip knot, attach my crochet hook, and I begin, I'm going to start with the giant ring of my cowl and then build upon the ring. So I'm going to start by chaining 73 chains and then I will slip stitch into the first chain to close this huge ring. So let's go ahead and take a second. Yes, make 73 chains. One, two, three, four, five, 72 and 73, great. Okay, so at this point, it's super important before we chain or slip stitch to close this ring together, it's important for you to make sure that there are no twists in this chain. So what I will do is I will run my thumb over the chain and I will actually have it form a circle to make sure that there are no twists before I join these two ends together. Now this is super important because if you choose not to do this step, just move straight on quickly to row one or round one of the cowl, then you risk actually having a twist. And I swear somebody will do this and then they will ask in the comment section below or say my cowl is twisted, why is my cowl twisted? And I will refer them back to this step right here. Did you check to make sure that your chain was not twisted before you joined the ends together. Someone's gonna do it, I know it. Once you have done this step, then you will slip stitch in that first chain to close your ring. And now our cowl is ready to begin. We're gonna start with round one of our cowl. For round one, we will chain two, one, Two, that chain two does not count as our first double crochet stitch. It does not. So go ahead and make one double crochet stitch in every chain all the way around. You should end with a total of 73 double crochet stitches. All right, so let's go ahead and begin in that first chain that we just chained two into. One, two, three, and I will meet you at the end of round one right here where we can join these two sides together, end round one, and move on to round two. You've got this. And 73, perfect. All right, so before we slip stitch to close round one, I want you to take a second and last check to make sure there's no twist, stand up your cowl, your row one. It should be able to stand up like this. See, there's no twist. Perfect. And now slip stitch into the top of that very first double crochet stitch to close round one. Remember that chain two does not count as a stitch, so we want to pretend it doesn't exist. It's just the stitch that gets us to the next round. And now we don't have to worry about twisting. We're good. So for round two, we're gonna start by chaining two to get us there. Again, that chain two does not count as a stitch. We're going to make four front post double crochet stitches, and then four back post double crochet stitches. And that will be the repeat pattern for round two. So finding that first double crochet stitch, we're going to find this, the post part of that double crochet stitch, yarn over, insert our crochet hook into the side of the stitch, behind the stitch, and out the other side of the stitch, yarn over, Pull that yarn through so it looks like it's flossing behind the stitch itself. Then yarn over, pull through two loops, 
yarn over, pull through two loops. And that's your front post double crochet stitch. Let's make three more. I'm gonna try to overemphasize these first stitches for anyone who has never done a front post before. There's three and four, and then four back post double crochet stitches. So finding the next double crochet stitch, yarn over, come from the back where your finger is, push that stitch backwards, and then come through the other side where your other finger is, yarn over, pull through, so it's like you're flossing, but on the other side of the stitch, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. The finger method can really help if you struggle with post stitches. So placing a finger on both sides of the stitch itself, then yarn over, come from the back, the other side, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, through two. So there's two back posts, got two more to make, four. And then repeat. So this is what it looks like right now. Repeat this, four front post double crochets and four back post double crochets all the way around. And I'll meet you here at the end of row two, round two, to show you how we close off round two and move on to round three. Three. Four, and there's going to be one double crochet stitch left over before we close round two. So there's going to be one stitch of round two that's going to be in that opposite range. So it's going to be a front post double crochet stitch right there. Boom. One. And we have finished with round two. We're going to skip that chain two because remember, we're pretending it doesn't exist. Find that first front post double crochet and slip stitch into the top of that first front post double crochet stitch. And that closes off round two of our cowl. Let's move on to round three and see how that is different. For round three, we start by chaining two. One, two, again, chain two does not count as a stitch. Now for round three, it starts to get a little different in the sense of we start with one back post double crochet stitch. So we find that first stitch here. Place our fingers on both sides of the post. Okay. Make our back post double crochet stitch. Right there. Great. And now we continue our four front post double crochet stitches four back post double crochet stitch repeat pattern. What this does is it offsets our four posts. Let me show you how that's gonna look. So two, three, up, oh, I'm front posting over a back post, four, and then four back post double crochet stitches. One, two, three, and oh, I'm back posting around a front post double crochet stitch, four. All right, so what we are doing now is everything got offset over one. So it's kind of going in a diagonal way right now. See the back posts, back posts, they shifted up. By having that first stitch be the opposite, now everything has been shifted over one and we're gonna start having this really cool diagonal effect go on. So go ahead and continue round three, doing what we always did with four front post double crochets, then four back post double crochet. Repeat that all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of round three to show you how we close round three and what we do different for round four. Three and four. Great. Okay, so slip stitch into the top. So skip that chain two. Slip stitch into the top of that first 
back post double crochet stitch to close round three. Beautiful. Look at this pattern. Isn't it neat? I think it's just super cool. All right, so let's move on to round four. For round four, we will begin by chaining two. One, two. Now for round four, the very first two stitches are going to be back post double crochet stitches. So back post double crochet, and then back post double crochet. And now we continue our pattern of four front post double crochets, four back post double crochets that we will repeat all the way around our cowl for the whole extent of round four. Again, what this will do is it will shift us over a little bit again, and we are gonna continue with this diagonal sh uh, direction of our post stitches. You got this. I will meet you at the very end of round four to close round four and show you what we do different for round five. One, two, three. Great, okay, so we just finished round four. Again, skipping over that chain two, finding that first back post double crochet stitch and slip stitching into that stitch to close round four. Beautiful. Ah, oh, it looks great. Okay, let's move on to round five. For round five, we will begin by chaining two. Again, does not count as a stitch. Now for round five, we start round five making three back post double crochet stitches. So, one, two, three, and now we begin our four front post double crochets, four back post double crochet repeat pattern all the way around for round five. And then we will end round five here. I will meet you here to show you how we close round five and begin round six and how that one is slightly different itself. All right, so four front post double crochets and then four back post double crochets. You got this pattern, you know what you're doing. I'll see you very soon. One and two, perfect. Okay, closing round five. Slip stitching into the top of that first back post double crochet stitch. And we are now ready for round six. For round six, we are going to chain two. One, two, again, does not count as a stitch. We start round six by making four back post double crochet stitches. So let's make one, two, three, and four. Great. And now we are all set up to do the four front post double crochet stitches and then four back post double crochet stitches. Repeat pattern all the way around for round six. Go ahead and continue on. I will meet you at the end of round six to show you how to close and then what we do different for round seven. All right, so it's actually in round six that I start to run out of yarn. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to, for me to show you how I join yarn to my project so that way I can keep going without skipping a beat. The technique that I really like using to join more yarn to my project is called the invisible knot. So I am working my project, running out of yarn. I'm gonna have the yarn that's attached to my project go in this direction. I'm going to grab my new skein of yarn that I want to join and have that yarn go in that direction. I'm going to butt them up against each other. I'm going to take these two yarns right here, take two fingers, go around my two fingers, take this little tail, go above the two yarns between my fingers and have it poke out towards my fingernails. I'm gonna grab that tail, remove my fingers, and pull tight to form a knot on this end. 
Then I'm gonna take my fingers, run to the other side, take these two fingers, wrap the two strings around those two fingers, take the little tail, go over the strings, between my fingers, so it's poking out towards my fingernails, grab those, or that tail right there, remove my fingers, pull tight so now there is a knot on this end, a knot on this end. Grab the yarn that's attached to my project, grab the strand of yarn that is attached to the new ball of yarn, and pull so those knots will come in towards each other and form a really strong bond, a really strong hold right there. Ooh, it's not going anywhere, it's super strong. Then grab your scissors, and I actually have found that you can cut your little tails really close to the knot, and that knot, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't weaken, it is good. So something like that right there. And then when you keep working, this especially works when the yarn that you are using or joining is the exact same color. And then you continue on. So here's the knot, the join that I just made. And I work past it. And then as I look back or reflect upon that join, you can't see it here. I'm going to even zoom in real close. You can't see that knot on this side. And if I turn the work, the knots right there, that is where it's at, but you can't really see it. Even when I'm super zoomed in, when I zoom back out, you, you can't see it. And then when I go for the next round, it really covers up entirely. So you don't have anything to come back and address. There is no bunny ears that are just sticking out of your work, waiting for you to come back and weave them into the project. You just keep going and it is awesome. I love this join. It's called the Invisible Knot. Use it if you would like. If you have another technique you like better, go ahead and use that. I just thought it would be a nice touch for me to show you how you can keep going without skipping a beat. All right, keep on going with round six, and I will meet you at the end of round six. Four, and we end round six with a back post double crochet stitch. And then we slip stitch into the top of that first back post double crochet stitch to close round six. Awesome, it's looking so good. All right, so for round seven, we will chain two, one, two. For round seven, we will start by making one front post double crochet stitch. And then we start with our repeat of four back post double crochet stitches and then four front post double crochet stitches and then repeat. So one, two, three, four, and then front post double crochet stitches, four of them. One, <laughs> two, three, and four. Perfect. All right, so that's the repeat pattern again, like we've done every single row up to this point, repeating four back post double crochets, then four front post double crochets all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of round seven to show you how we close round seven, what we do next for round eight. But look at how this pattern is looking so far. Isn't that neat? Just continuing that diagonal post look. All right, you're doing fantastic. I'll see you very soon at the end of round seven. Three and four, great. All right, so slip stitch into the top of that first double uh, front post double crochet stitch to close round seven. For round eight, we will chain two. 
For round eight, we are going to begin by making one front post double crochet stitch in the first two stitch spaces. So we got one and then two right there. Great. And now we do our repeat pattern of four back post double crochet stitches and then four front post double crochet stitches. And repeat all the way around our cowl. I'll meet you at the end of round eight to fasten off round eight and show you what to do different for round nine. Two, three, great. Okay, slip stitch into the top of that first front post double crochet stitch to close round eight. We are now on to round nine. Round nine, we will chain two, one, two. We will make one front post double crochet stitch around the first three stitch spaces. One, two, and three, and now we are at our repeat pattern of four back post double crochet stitches and then four front post double crochet stitches. Repeat that pattern all the way around for round nine. I will meet you at the end of round nine here to tie off round nine and show you what to do next. And perfect, two. Slip stitch into the top of that first front post double crochet stitch. Great, all right, now we are on to round 10. We're gonna chain two, one, two, and we're gonna start by making four front post double crochet stitches and then four back post double crochet stitches and repeating this pattern all the way around for round 10. And I'll meet you at the end of round 10 for us to close round 10. Three and four and last stitch here is a front post double crochet stitch great all right slip stitch into the top of the very first front post double crochet stitch to close round 10 and we have just finished our cowl we do not have enough yarn to finish one more row we will have enough to get this close to finishing one more row but it's not enough so we're gonna stop here we're gonna grab our scissors, cut a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project here. Yarn over that tail, pull the tail through the loop on our crochet hook, pull tight for a tie off, and our project is done. The only thing we have left to do is take our yarn needle or tapestry needle, weave in all of our ends, these two right here, and your cowl is complete. So what did you think of the Leela cowl? Did you have a lot of fun with this pattern? Wasn't it interesting how after a certain point you start to click, it, you start to get it and you're like, oh, that's all we have to do is shift over one space and then repeat. Fascinating, right? I hope you had a lot of fun with this pattern. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask in the comment section below this video. I will try to respond to every question that I can, but if you see that I have not answered a question and you know the answer to that question, help me out by helping out that person, answer the question for them, and then when I come through, I will see what you have responded, and I will say, yep, that's exactly how I would have answered that question, or I will add, well, this is how I would have answered this question, or this is another way of doing it. So to help out, I really just like this community and how we help each other out, lift each other up and just make the whole experience of crocheting 
fun and easy to do. It's just beautiful and I love it. If you had fun with this cowl, you might also really enjoy these other videos I have right here. There are more scarf and cowl videos for you to watch. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and crocheting with me. I always love hanging out with you and crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day guys and I will see you with my next video. Bye.